guys you're welcome back hope you guys are feeling good my name is Bukumi Bike Kran thank you so much for clicking so how to get things to love prayer and Quran so this person actually asked a question how can they let their children love to pray or to recite Quran so let's watch so one of the questions that's come in online how can I generate love towards Salat and Quran in my kids I see other older kids who are regulars at the masjid now rarely coming to the mosque unless forced by their parents. Hmm. So there's a young man I know who, mashallah, every time I see him, he sits in the front row um, at Jummah. And every Jamaat prayer that I've ever seen him in, he's right there in the front row. And I was asking him about that, like, how, where does that desire come from or that habit? And he told me that when he was little, he's older now, he's uh, 19. When he was little, he said his father would give him a dollar every time he would go and sit in the front row. Oh, wow. And he said, <laughs> so as a child, he loved collecting those dollars, $5 a day so adds up. An and he said, but now I just do it out of habit. Yeah. He knows he's not getting any dollars from anyone for sitting in the front row, but it's become his habit. Mm, and he, mashallah, broke it down really beautifully for me because we were talking about how is the best way to teach the religion and put a love for the religion and the practice of the faith in the next generation and he told me that he thinks three things are very important he said one is that there needs to be motivation oh. so he said when he was little that dollar that he that got for sitting in the front row was motivation but now that he's older the motivation is talking about akhirah talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but to really make sure that there's some motivation when you're talking to your kids about their ibadah the second thing he said was role models he said he named specific shiuch who were there in his community who inspired him and who he enjoyed watching while they were praying and that they were the ones yeah. who had a big influence on him on, on the way he prayed and his desire to pray mm. and so the third thing he told me was so he said motivation role, role models mothers. and the third thing he said was understanding oh, yeah. he said it's very important to understand why you're praying and what you're saying and what the point is behind prayer he said for many kids he's seen that parents say oh Allah expects you to pray so you have to pray it's haram not to pray but they don't actually understand why and what's the purpose behind it and as far as the question which says that they saw that kids who used to come regularly and you know maybe were into the Quran or into praying but now they see that they don't come unless their parents are quote unquote forcing them to what I've seen is that in life, it's, we're not just on the steady course. There's ups and downs that come, even in our own lives. Yeah. And if we look at ourselves and think that right now, if I had somebody who was forcing me or telling me that I have to read this much Quran every day, or I have to sit for this long in my prayer afterwards and do dua, would we rebel against that? Or would that be something that would make us go, yeah, that's something I want to take on. And it's important that when kids after the age of 14 what I've seen is that we need to kind of give them their space once you've established routines for them th throughout the early years what I've noticed is after 14 you're really just maintaining whatever you've taught them up to the age of 14 with all three of my kids I've seen that that after 14 it's really hard to start implementing anything new yeah. and whatever we've been teaching them up until that point is now what we're going to be maintaining and I hope we can build on that but if we are going to build on it it's going to come from them it's not going to come from us it, it's going to be completely self-directed and self-motivated and you know this I learned it the hard way one of my sons um, when we gave him a car for his personal use I told him that you can have the car, we're going to give you the car, but only on the condition that you go to the masjid for Fajr and Isha. Mm. So if you go to the masjid for Fajr and Isha, then, then you can have the car. And he had been going, but it had been hit or miss. It wasn't a regular thing. He'd been going on his own. But all of a sudden, I, I saw it take a dip. It wasn't, the, the effect was the opposite of what I had wanted and what I had hoped for and he actually told me he said you know mama up until now 
when I was doing it, it was doing, I was doing it because it was a goal I was trying to achieve for myself. But now that you told me that in order to have the car, I have to go for Fajr and Isha to the masjid, it feels like a chore. And all of a sudden, the desire isn't there the way it was before. And I took it back. I, I apologized and I said he could have the car and as long as he's not going anywhere haram in it or doing anything haram in it, God forbid, he's welcome to, to use the family car. But, um, but that was a big lesson for me that you can't force kids to do, to do anything when they're older. And, and we're talking to parents of teens right now, so after the age of 14, you have to give them the space to figure it out and hopefully um, you've been setting routines and giving them role models throughout their life before. All right. Okay, so I love Ahansa. Ahansa was so beautiful. Like, there's something I got from Ahansa and I, something I got from the question. So this sister actually asked a question that, how do you implement it on your children or your kids that they need to read their Quran and they need to pray regularly? She has noticed that as a child, our children were growing up, they stopped going to mosque. You know, even, they, even though they go, they will have to be forced to do so. And said, how ah, can she, you know, correct that? Then this woman, you know, gave a lot of instances. I love the part where she said somebody spoke to her about how it all started, that his parents... Anytime he goes to marks, the father will give him a one dollar note, and you know that motivated him to be going to marks. So they said that he was always on the front seat, like the front row, so that you know the seriousness. They will see the seriousness, seriousness in him. So he's always going to the mosque. Does not miss any program, you know, because the father promised that any program he goes to, you give him one dollar note. After some months, it became an habit. So they said that when he started growing up as uh, as a teenage as a teen to a teenager, he started you know getting used to that lifestyle. So they said that he stopped collecting money from his father. So that became part of him. So he said something that if you want children to love God or to do the things of God while they are still young, you, there are three things you need to do. You need to motivate them. You need to really motivate them. It can be money, you can maybe food, you can use different means to motivate them. That child will be like, ah, since my parents have promised me this, oh yeah, I have to do it. You know, that will be their motive in the beginning. But from there, they will get used to going to the mosque and, you know, their lifestyle will change. The second one is them having a role model. It's good to have a role model because that role model, will it will charge you up to be punctual it's to charge you up to keep going to the mosque so he said if you have a role model you have somebody in the mosque that you want to be like or that motivates you a lot because of the way he prays or do this and that will give you the eagerness to go to mosque regularly and he said the last one is understanding you need to understand the reason why you're going to mosque because if a child doesn't understand the reason why he goes to mosque he will not go if you don't understand something, you won't do it, right? Even we human beings, even though we are preparing for exam and we don't understand the question, how do you intend to answer it well? Maybe, for instance, you're in a classroom and a lecturer or a teacher asks you a question and you don't know anything about it. You won't be able to answer it, right? Because you don't have an idea about it. Maybe the question is new to you, or you you don't you know you don't have interest in the topic. You don't you don't really you know put full attention into the topic. So that also actually goes in hand with religion. That your children have to understand the reason why they should go to the mosque. Let them understand why they must go to the mosque. So he said that actually changes lifestyle. And that decision his parent took on him made him change you know everything started with motivation that one one dollar note he was getting every time you know changed his life for good i don't know if that can actually work for everybody i'm sure some children will misuse that fast even though you give that child money from nothing five years to come they might just be doing it because of the benefits they are getting from from them going to to that mosque or to a particular place but the guy said definitely no i know i your your mindset will change and then you're used to something you won't be forced to do it so she said you know the one thing my parents should understand is that when a child is little you can only correct a child or tell a child to do something at a young age 
at the when the child reach 13 or 14 you cannot force the child to do something you can't impose it on a child because now the child is getting matured he knows left from right he knows the good from the bad and so if you want the child to be religious you want the child to behave well you need to start teaching the child from the age of even one year old as long as the child start talking let the child know that this is good this is not good this is bad but if you ignore your child at a very tender age and you think it's still if the child is too young to understand things it's too young for you to teach basic things of life whether religion or life generally then it will bounce back at the parents because when the child start reaching 13 40 and at that age they're already in gs1 gs2 there are a lot of things they'll be you know seeing learning from their friends and everything and if they, those things are new to them it can change their lifestyle but if it's something that you yourself you've explained to your child why they are growing up even though they see some strange things you no know, they're able to walk up to you to talk to you or from there you know when it comes to religion when you start teaching your child from childhood okay read your quran do this you do this you pray this how to behave this how to speak to others this how to you know it should be part and parcel of that child if the child will get used to it so they said that when the child is growing up you will get used to it and you'll be growing up with that the woman said if your child is around 40 years old and you want to start telling that child to go to mosque to pray it will be very tough because the work you should have done when he was younger you should have done it when he was younger not now that he's not getting older then it will be very hard for you to correct such child so that was a beautiful video i love how she just you know explained everything you know let them understand the right time to teach a child on when to pray you know how to motivate the child motivation goes a long way even as an adult when we are being motivated at work we want to do more for the company right so if they don't motivate you at work you will not want to put enough you know effort but when they motivate you maybe by increasing your salary or by giving you recognition or by giving you awards you want to do better that's how you should also treat your child your children so that is it guys let me know your thoughts in the comment box thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe for more action comment i'll see you in the next one bye